So a lot of people who just get started off in sales, they're scared and they're losing a lot of money because they just jump to like discounting and negotiating. And I understand it because it's a safe place. Yet at the same time, that doesn't mean that you providing the best product or service to the customer because sometimes you be pocket watching because of the money that you got and you're not value providing. Say that again, you pocket watching and not value providing. So really, the only negotiation that we should be doing is a negotiation of perspective. You know, um, because if you if you truly believe in a product, if you truly believe in the service and maybe you've utilized it or if you've seen people that have utilized it and it helped, then all you're really negotiating that's losing you money is perspective. See, what happens if, if they don't believe in the product for the most part or the service, you don't believe in it. Because if you're so quick to, di let's just say you're selling real estate. You know, I know it's a common thing. We could say selling cars or even insurance, right? Those are common things that people do. So you're selling real estate and you're about to list a house. And automatically after you do your walkthrough and you talk to them about maybe changing the colors of the paint to a more neutral color and uh, maybe getting the carpet clean, you know, just suggestions, decluttering. And you sit down and you're you're starting to talk about numbers, you know, because at the end of the day, most transactions are going to have some numbers involved, right? So when you get the numbers, you really get into the logical part of your sales process or the presentation. You know, it's going from emotional to logical. And when you get in this process, right, your your perspective has to stay high and you have to stay in a, a neutral state like your your pace doesn't need to change much like it doesn't need to go crazy slow down it doesn't need to speed up quickly like you know you need to have a good pace you have a great perspective on what you're doing and your value right and when they ask you for a discount when they say well hey uh john said they were listed at one and a half percent and then this way you know they pretty much tell you oh man we will be saving eight thousand dollars when we list with John, you know, so your thing, if you automatically say, well, hey, man, I probably could do two and a half percent. Can we meet in the middle? So you automatically saying that you're really not adding any value, you know, so the question is, like, if, if John, so-called John, is really going to list for one and a half percent, you know, if he's discounting you there off the gate so quickly, how quick is he just readily to make a deal, you know? Why? You know, why Why are they discounting? Most of the market's not working like that. You know, so that's when you got to kind of stand firm in them situations and, and not start negotiating your perspective. Well, hey, I, I completely understand what John was would be doing for you. And it seems like, um, man, I know he's probably overloaded with clients if he's, you know, charging people one and a half percent. And they're getting all the money that they want. You know, I, I can't imagine how he has any clients. You know, I, it would be hard for me because we provide such value. And, you know, at the end of the day, and this is where you do a pattern interruption. As I'm saying something like this, right? At the end of the day, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Phillips, I'm just using names, right? You would, you don't, it, it don't matter to you what John gets, right? I mean, at the end of the day, if, if John was to get one and a half percent, and you still didn't get what you want, you wouldn't be happy that he discounted, right? Like, you're not going to be happy if he discounts and you still don't get what you want, right? Right. So let me ask you this. If there's a way, right, that we can make sure that, as we've done with our other clients, that whatever uses statistics, 95% of the time, we're able to meet their number through proper marketing, uh, proper listing strategies. You know, we always list on a Friday or, and we always, if, if it doesn't have an offer by the next Friday, we're doing a open house on a Sunday. So you got a strategy, you got a plan for them that shows them. And then we go into discount. So we, you give them a plan and you're, you're, the thing is you're sold on your perspective. You're not sold on what they told you because we all know that in any situation to where most things are discounted, that's not the best service. So and you can always say that you can say you can say what people are thinking, because sometimes that's just their natural response. You know, hey, you know, I understand uh, John uh, is discounted like but let me just ask you a question. You know, 
we're not a discount team. You know, we like to help and we like to provide high value of service and we do a lot. You know, whatever we do, Facebook marketing, we, you know, whatever, blast out. You know, my question is, you know, how often is it that sometimes you get what you pay for? Have you ever heard that saying? Yes, I would hate for that to happen, right? Like, I, I you know, I would rather for us to start with a good value of service. And, you know, if we had to help you down the road, we're not saying discount. If we had to help you down the road, we will. So learning the vocabulary is good, but just really being sold on your perspective and what you do and what you're providing. And there's no different if, like I say, you're selling insurance. You know, if you go in there, you're selling life insurance and you see a family and they both making uh, $50,000 a year, right? And they got young kids and you do the dime theory. That's a life insurance theory. And you, you let them know that, okay, from the dime, which is dime is death, income, mortgage, education, or you could say like expenses or expenditures, right? And it comes, let's say they need a million dollar policy. But let's say a million dollar policy is going to be $200 a month. And they're sitting there telling you they can't afford it. You know, so then you need to go to, you know, like uh, 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 affordability. Like you got to make them see how affordable it is. Because, see, they're spending $200 a month on something every month. And that might just be something light. Like there might be a, a energy drinks, you know. But, the, you know, the question is, hey, I, I understand this seems a lot more than what you're paying. But let me just show you, if you don't mind, how affordable this is. You know, and then you talk to them. If you know if you could spend this much per day, you know, how, how good would it feel to know that when you go, your kid's school is taken care of, um, you know, the house is paid for, your husband or your wife's uh, income is replaced for the next 10 years. Have, and you paint a picture, you know, and, and have you ever seen the story where it wasn't like that? Have you ever seen a story where they had to ask for a fish fry? And, and you have to paint a hypothetical picture in the front and put it out in the front. Then you have to make a solution for it. You know, so uh, those, those type of things uh, are all about perspective. Even if you were selling cars, it's the same thing. You know, it works for a consultation or class. You know, your perspective is the only thing that you start negotiating that costs you to lose money. And it's you think you're doing them a favor, right? But if it's somebody, just think about this shit. If it's somebody out there who's supposed to have a million dollar policy, according to the dime theory, right? And you know that if they die with freaking twenty thousand dollars, they family gonna hurt. I mean, dude, wouldn't I? I wouldn't feel good if I didn't at least fight for it. If I didn't at least try to make them understand it, All right? That just don't make sense. That's like you going to buy a car. And they just let you, the insurance company just say, hey, man, just get liability and you got a loan. And so now that happened, when something happened to your car, you ain't, your car not paid for it, then you'd be wishing that you spent the extra $100 because now you got to pay twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Like, you'd be like, damn, bro, I wish they would have just told me that off gate. So just because you give somebody something cheaper, it doesn't mean it's always better for them. So you really have to get that out your head. And, and man, maybe if, if you can't stand behind, behind the company or product that you're serving to the people, then maybe um, either you're not convinced and maybe you need to find something that makes sense for what you're serving. You know, there's people out here right now that legit sell, you know, three, four thousand dollar bags. It's companies that believe that this purse is worth four thousand dollars. It's liquor companies that believe that. This liquor is worth four thousand dollars. This wine is so you don't believe that the product that somebody buying a house is worth three percent. You make a four thousand dollars. Somebody pay for, pay for a bottle of wine like that's too much. How? So it's all about the perspective in which you're going to negotiate. So don't negotiate your perspective, right? Don't do that.